and today's topic of discussion is about transfusion related acute lung injury short for known as trally so we will discuss this topic under following subheadings first we will discuss about the definition then criteria to call is a trally then what are the etiology and risk factors then what is the pathogenesis then what is the clinical features of a trally then diagnostic features of trally differential diagnosis management of trally and how we prevent the trally So first we discuss about the definition. The acute lung injury occurring within six hours is known as trally. Trally is one of the manifestation of acute lung injury and it is a clinical diagnosis. And it is a serious complication of transfusion which is characterized by non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Trally has been associated with all blood components that contain plasma such as platelet concentrate, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate. Most importantly, we suspect trally when new acute lung injury develops during or within hours of transfusion. What are the criteria to call as a trally? Acute onset hypoxemia, ratio of PO2 by FiO2 less than 300 or saturation of oxygen less than 90% of room temperature with and the condition which occurred during or within 6 hours before transfusion, bilateral diffuse pulmonary infiltrates no evidence of left atrial hypertension that is circulatory overload so what are the etiology and risk factors trally typically associated with plasma rich components such as platelets and ffps trally is an immune mediated disorder where antibodies directed against hla are most probable cause of trally multiparous women are more prone to suffer from trally why what is the reason because they develop anti-leukocyte antibodies in their previous pregnancies resulting in fatality on exposure to fetal blood. Massive transfusion can also result in trally. Stored blood products which are rich of inflammatory mediators like cytokines and lipid soluble substances that accumulate during storage of blood. Underlying conditions such as underlying conditions such underlying conditions such as trauma, major surgery and sepsis are also the risk factors. So what are the pathogenesis? Trally pathogens is explained by immune and non-immune mechanisms. Immune mechanisms. Passive transfer of HLA or neutrophil antibodies from donor to blood product recipient, which result in leukoagglutination in pulmonary vasculature, which results in the complement activation, which results in the alveolar damage. Alveolar damage results in increase in permeability of pulmonary circulation, then resulting in the pulmonary edema, which is non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Then the non-immune mechanism, transfusion of other elements which include biologically active lipids that accumulate during storage which results in the alveolar damage, which results in the increase in permeability in pulmonary circulation which results in pulmonary edema. Both immune and non-immune mechanisms likely work through a two heat mechanism which, in, which include the first heat and second heat. The first heat is described as patient's underlying conditions such as comorbidities primes the lung endothelium and leukocytes. Second hit, transfusion of HLA or neutrophils antibodies or biological active lipids results in the pulmonary edema. In both the hits, granulocytes accumulate within pulmonary vasculature and extravasate into the alveoli. So this is the pictorial uh, representation how we describe the mechanisms of the trally so the normal alveolus compared with injured alveolus is seen on either side in early phase of acute lung injury pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin 8 1 and tumor actress factor which are released by the macrophages cause neutrophils to adhere to the pulmonary capillaries and they extravasate into the alveolar space where they undergo activation activated neutrophils release a variety of factors such as leukotrienes oxidants proteases and plated activating factors which contribute to local tissue damage resulting in the accumulation of edema fluid in air spaces surfactant inactivation and hyaline membrane formation macrophage migration inhibitory factor mif released into the local milieu sustains the ongoing pro-inflammatory response subsequently the release of macrophage derived fibrogenic cytokines such as transforming growth factor beta and later derived growth factor stimulate fibroblast growth factor fgf and collagen depoisation which are associated with the healing phase of the injury 
clinical features of the trial dyspnea or respiratory distress requiring oxygen support virtually in all patients with trial 70% of individuals with trial require mechanical ventilation hypoxia noted virtually in all trial patients sinusitis which is very common in trial patients majority of trial patients hypotension is more common fever is very common in trial patients clinical examination reveals respiratory distress and pulmonary crackles which may be present with no signs of congestive heart failure or volume overload so diagnostic features in trial onset within 1 to 6 hours of transfusion acute respiratory distress acute bilateral pulmonary edema which is non cardiogenic severe hypoxemia hypotension fever mild to severe clinical spectrum the differential diagnosis transfusion related bacterial sepsis anaphylactic transfusion reactions transfusion associated cardiac overload which is not known as taco hemolytic transfusion reaction so one by one we discuss the differential diagnosis uh, related to trali first we talk about the transfusion related bacterial sepsis which results due to transfusion of contaminated rbc saturated concentrates which manifest as fever hypotension vascular collapse which may result in respiratory distress anaphylactic transfusion reactions results in respiratory distress related to bronchospasm manifested by tachypnea wheezing sinusitis and severe hypotension respiratory distress from above complication results in laryngeal and bronchial edema rather than pulmonary edema as in trali transfusion associated cardiac overload which is often known as taco which develops within minutes to hours of respiratory distress as tachypnea tachycardia hypertension and sinusitis can occur all the blood components have been implicated in taco not as in trali where only protein containing blood components is a cause of pathogenesis in trali taco responds rapidly to aggressive diuresis and ventilatory support so these are the following uh, differentiation differences between the trali and taco so the temperature that fever is present in uh, trali which is absent in taco blood pressure that is hypotension is uh, common in trali which is uh, hypertension is uh, seen in uh, taco acute dyspnea is seen in uh, trali which is uh, seen in both in taco and trali whereas uh, jugular vein pressure uh, which is unchanged in both of them auscultation uh, is uh, seen in uh, trali is rails which in uh, taco is rails it is uh, s3 heart sound is seen can be heard chest radiograph uh, in trali diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrates uh, uh, seen also also seen in case of taco there is subtraction uh, some most of the condition normal but in some conditions uh, decreased in case of trali whereas in taco it is uh, resection fraction is decreased pulmonary artery ac acute occlusion pressure the pulmonary artery occlusion pressure in trali is less than 18 mm per mercury in taco more than 18 mm per mercury pulmonary edema fluid in trali exudate is seen taco transudate is seen response diuretic uh, trial minimal whether taco significant improvement is seen wbc is in trial transient leukopenia whereas in taco which is unchanged bnp is less than uh, 200 pico per pico per gram per ml whereas in taco which is uh, more than 1200 pico gram per ml so this is the about the differentiations uh, between the trial and taco so hemolytic transfusion reactions it is distinguished from trial by presence of hemolysis management of trial immediate and uh, conservative management are, uh, can be uh, done in uh, trial management so immediate management stop transfusion immediately support the patient the patient is intubated obtain undiluted edema fluid as soon as possible within 15 minutes and simultaneous plasma for determination of total protein obtain cbc with dc and uh, chest radiograph notify the blood bank of possibility of trial request at di different unit and quarantine different unit from same donor conservative management for mild trial cases supplemental oxygen and supportive care may be sufficient for most severe cases iv fluid mechanical and non invasive ventilation and invasive cardiovascular monitoring may be required extra corporeal membrane oxygenation has been used successfully in severe cases of trial how we prevent trial avoiding blood from multivarous women as these uh, women are at risk of producing anti leukocyte antibodies during previous pregnancies donors whose blood has resulted in trial like reactions previously blood which has been stored for long duration that is long storage duration production of anti leukocyte antibodies leukocyte reduction is useful in prevention of trial as it removes preformed antibodies thank you